A few days ago, I noticed an interesting Discord message. In six hours, Jimothy Cool is hosting a Furret only tournament. Furthermore, I learned that the winner could pick any video topic for Jim to make. Naturally, as a lover of Pokemon that most deem terrible, this caught my attention. So I postponed my workout to the next day, later that day prepared for about half an hour, and then joined the tournament. So a few things about this tournament. First of all, this was played in Gen 9 Anything Goes, meaning Baton Pass and Terrestrialization were allowed. It was a single elimination tournament with each match being a best of three and a total of 128 participants. Any and all third sets were allowed. Choice specs, booster slash baton passer, fear, it was truly anything goes. So people, myself included, did not hold back with their third sets. Here's a quick preview of my team, as well as a slightly revised version that I ran later in the tournament. Stop! You violated the law. Subscribe to my channel or face the wrath of Furret. Now without further ado, let's get into the tournament itself. Now, if you were expecting to see my first set, you would be wrong. After all, I didn't go into this tournament cartoonishly rubbing my hands and scheming about a video. I just wanted to play in a funny tournament. As such, all of my footage is from the VOD, since this tournament was livestreamed and commentated by Jim Cool. Thankfully, he just so happened to come upon my second set versus Mint Yerb. Because of Baton Pass being legal, we both spent a long time boosting to create monstrous ferrets. We are constructing the most powerful ferrets ever imagined. Once I passed into an offensive ferret, Mint tricked a choice scarf onto me. This would have proved disastrous for me if it were not for his complete lack of a Terra Ghost ferret to punish the choice log. So with Brick Break, I finished out the game. Game 2 opened similarly, but things got goofy once my terrifying Focus Blast ferret met Mint's Moringa Berry Amnesia for it. Mint's Terra Fairy kept his Baton Pass chain alive, but even with his plus 3 special defense, the next ferret could not withstand the Focus Blast Barrage. Thus, I had won the set with back to back 6 0s on stream. Set 3 was interesting, because my opponent was none other than Thunder Games, a peer from the 35 Pokes community. They are sparring partners, they've been practicing Ferret used all night for this tournament, so. This is the set where Jim began to construct the narrative of me being an expert fur player who knew all of my fur calcs by heart. The truth is that I was operating mostly on vibes. After setting up with my special attacking fur at T, I quickly took game one. But Thunder is a good player, and he would not go down so easily in game two. Thunder took an early lead, but I got my special fur set up, even getting my Pattaya Berry off to boost T's special attack. However, with only one coil boost, Focus Blast is only 93% accurate, and I hit only one out of three. Despite having three furts left, none of them were, like, real attackers, so I honorably forfeit. Wow. The, the forfeit from Porter Bay knows the position. He knows that it's over. Not wanting to end up in the same position, I let off game three with my fear for it to immediately trade. We traded back and forth for a bit, but once I got my special attacking T into position, this time with two coil boosts to guarantee Focus Blast would never miss, Thunder fought valiantly, but ultimately could not withstand the power of Focus Blast for it. Set 4 was an intimidating matchup. These are two Furret fanatics, and they have been on a tear this tournament. For the uninitiated, my opponent Ozma is a member of the OU Council, and famously battled Temp 6T. I knew this would be a good challenge. I got my Tank E into a good position after surviving the onslaught of their Choice Specs Furret. I then caught them going for Terra Electric and landed a devastating double edge. This is a master at work. This is a master at work. We are seeing a Furret Masterclass before our very eyes. Osma recovered for a bit, but I ended up the game with Lychee Berry Reversal for it. Many in the chat are saying Portobello Mushroom is is cooking up a barbecue today. An elite level chef cooking up some, some tasty Portobello Mushrooms for us all. I started off game two on the back foot, but I evened out the position. Portobello Mushroom all of a sudden has evened this out. How does he do it? The position looked horrible. It's just these little minutiae, they all add up. Evening it out. Completely. That is the the goat difference, they say. The opposing choice specs for it once again put me into a precarious spot, but I piloted my trusty T into position once more. However, when Osmos Terra Electric seemed to have foiled me, they switched out and let T continue to ravage their team. In the end, Osmos signature Terra Electric for it stood alone and was too weak and I secured the set 2-0. Set 5 was against the player Lil Felu, who famously fell Tomotaku's lone defense curl for it at the very beginning of the tournament. Despite getting multiple setups, Lil Felu had made it deep into the tournament for a reason, but was not so easy to sweep. 
After a lot of back and forth trading, I eventually sealed game one with none other than Terra Ghost Fear Fur, which successfully took out not one, but two opposing furs. For game two, Jim returned with his commentary, and at this point, I had made some adjustments to my team. I had learned from other fearsome fur players before me and gave my special attacking fur a T throat spray. That way it could reliably boost its own special attack with Hyper Voice and not have to rely on Pattaya Berry boost being passed to it. However, my folly in this game was going all in with T while little fellows still had their focus sash endeavor fur it, and I lost my most powerful fur it. After some more maneuvering, I got my reversal fur it in with some boosts, and a lucky crit allowed me to Oko fellows boost it fur it. The fur it upstairs, the one who makes all the rules. Smiling upon Portobello Mushroom with some good fortune right there. With Fellow's Focus Sash and Red Card boats being spent, I proceeded to sweep the game. Portobello Mushroom is the GOAT. So far, this is incredible. You may have noticed this isn't about me winning the tournament, and set 6 is where I finally met my fate, in semi-finals. My opponent, Charizard Attorney, was ready for all of my antics. Moreover, almost his entire team had Baton Pass. So anytime a fur of his was at a disadvantage, it would just BP out, thus preserving the boost. In game one, a well-timed Terragosa against my Fearit brought him a lot of momentum, and ultimately I was unable to break the Terragos fur it. Going down kind of characteristically in game one, but we know that Portobello Mushroom is the clutch god. The ultimate baton pass chain, it turns out, is slow and steady. In game two, I got T going with some boosts, but yet again I was folded by Terragosa from Charizard. A huge Terra Ghost sub just destroyed Portobello Mushroom going for a Focus Blast. It was telegraphed. Every forward with Throat Spray goes for the early. Shadow Ball adaptation, folks. Oh my gosh. I was able to stabilize with Shadow Ball and a follow-up KO against Charizard's Focus Blast for it, but T took too much damage and was out of commission thereafter. I also made a choke here. I was in position to tear a ghost to avoid Quick Attack, but the mental tax of playing tournament sets for two and a half hours was taking its toll on me, and I was losing my edge. After my special fur went down, Charizard understood the position and began to spam Charm. With only physical fur it's left and the Terra Ghost fur to deny my fear it, I knew it was over, and Charizard took the set. Charizard Tawny takes it. Our new hero. Despite being beat handily by Charizard, I didn't feel bad after losing, and Charizard did go on to win the tournament after all. Honestly, even if you don't have the perfect ending, you can still have a great experience, and this event was a ton of fun. I got to be one of the main characters of this journey, and honestly, that's more than I can ask for. Congratulations to some of the MVPs, Portobello Mushroom putting on a show. Thank you Jim for putting on the tournament, and I'll see you guys next time.